Yo, Elliot, I hope you and your family are doing well, brother. We're doing great, man. Thank you. So over the past few days, omens, specifically angel numbers, have been on my mind. Long story short, I've been engaging in stillness and hearing God in that stillness. And so I have felt his presence and revelations in my life. Now, I've never believed in omens, but the weirdest thing happened. I started seeing this number over and over again and looked up what it meant. Funny enough, the meaning of that number is identical to the revelation I've gotten from God. Super weird stuff. My question is, in your experience, have you come across omens of any sort? If so, have they been of any value to you? Not sure if I'm able to make today's session, but I'll, sh I'll catch the replay. So it's funny because the other day I heard, I heard somebody describe it as, so there are two perspectives. There's a psychological pers pers perspective and the biblical perspective of these quote unquote omens. The psychological perspective comes from the work of Carl Jung, where he called it serendipity, right? Or synchronicity. He called it synchronicity, right? There are certain synchronous events, right? Like I'm thinking about someone and then they call, right? Or like you say, I'm of this particular mindset and then I receive a glimpse of a number that reminds me of it. That's what you're talking about, right? These numbers. I look up, what does that number mean? Whoa, synchronicity. It lined up with my thought. It must mean something, right? So it's called synchronicity. And I've kind of gone back and forth, right? Because I've had synchronous events in my life. I've seen certain numbers over and over again in my life. And then I came across a different perspective on what these, these actually represent, what they are, and how, in fact, they may throw us off our path if we don't see it from the right perspective. And so reading the work of uh, St. Ignatius, Ignatius Brianishov, he's an Orthodox Christian saint, right? And he wrote a book for seminarians, right, monks and seminarians called uh, The Arena. Really amazing book. In fact, I, got, I have three of his books. Where are they there? I'll pull them up one day, but as, if you're a part of this program, you've definitely heard me uh, mention St. Ignatius, Brianna Shaw. And he is of the opinion, and many of the monks, the, the, especially if you read like the Desert Fathers, right? These are, these are writings of the early Christians that were like, uh, these guys were what you would call ascetics, right? They would live in the spiritual realm, denying the body completely, and they would go to spiritual battle in the, in the woods or in the jungle or in the desert, right? These were, these were wild ascetic men, Stoics, right? And according to him and them, when I'm reading these works, they say, don't trust any of it because they come from Satan who's wanting to get you to uh, forget God and hold on to lucky lucky numbers and lucky rabbit's foots and uh, uh, soothsayers and psychics and all these various worldly uh, premonitions or these worldly uh, uh, symbols and signs and omens, if you will, that, will, that lead us to where and how we should live our life rather than resting on, here's a second perspective, the grace of the Lord. So we're either living with synchronicity, which lines up with new age ways of thinking, right? The new age was where, you know, these ideas of angel numbers and certain uh, omens of that sort come from. Or, now, where did I hear this uh, described? Uh, I can't remember the resource. But he was saying, yes, those things are there, but you have to be able to distinguish them between them being from Satan and from them being the grace of God. So we can call it synchronicity or we can call it the grace of God. Now, your, your question is, have I ever come across this uh, in any way of any sort? And I do, and I do, and I do all the time. But here's how I approach it these days. I don't put too much stock in it. I look at them like, uh, like a curiosity. I look at them if, just with curiosity. I say, wow, that's interesting. But then I don't go and play the lottery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't then go and make the big decision because I saw angel numbers, right? I don't go and make a huge decision in my life or change the course of my life because of a symbol in my dream. 
ne- I don't do that anymore. I don't even trust my dreams anymore because they can be infiltrated by demonic entities, right? So you can see these things, and it doesn't mean that they're not true, right? Even like you know, words from a psychic, right? They could be true. If you read uh, in, in, I think it's in Acts of the Apostles, where Paul talks about how he and another disciple of Christ went into a town, and a little girl who had been used by wealthy people because she was psychic. She was, in other words, this little girl had the spirit of a of of a psychic demon in her, right? And if you read you, you, the story, I mean, I don't remember. I can't quote the, uh, the 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 past the passage or the scripture itself, but there's a story where Paul is coming into town and this little girl is like, you are with that guy, Jesus, right? She starts like calling him out, like, you're one of those guys. You And starts like pointing him out to the people, even though Paul's like, oh, well, I didn't even say anything. I didn't do anything. This little girl was a psychic and she was pointing to him and saying, oh, this is one of Jesus's disciples. We, I know who you are because it was the demon within her that knew. A lot of psychics aren't psychic themselves. They, they, uh, they're working with, Thomas uses the right word, divination, the spirit of divination. This is a demonic spirit that takes that person over. And even though they're giving you insight, right, like she knew, she wasn't wrong, right? Maybe the angel's number is, is not wrong, it's right. But, it, but the sentiment from which it proceeds, where it's coming from, is from a, from a trickster, right? Satan is a trickster. So he wants you to be, he wants to be enamored with the psychic. Like, oh, wow. Like imagine Paul didn't know any better. What Paul ended up doing was exercising the demon out of this girl. That's what he did. He started praying over her and that demon left her and then she was no longer psychic. And you might say to yourself, oh, that's a shame. She lost her ability, but she didn't want to have that. In fact, she was being used by wealthy people in that town to, to like, you know, give them lottery numbers and shit like that, whatever, right? So anyway, my point is that I don't trust these things as if they're true. I see them. I might be fascinated and curious. And I sometimes ask myself, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what that means, but I don't make any big life decisions on it. And here's, here's what you need to understand, that if these omens or revelations per se are actually coming from God, he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop until you get it, right? So this is one of the tactics, one of the strategies of the, the, the early Christian fathers and, and St. Ignatius asserts this. He says, look, if it's really from God and he really wants you to do it, he's going to come again. He's going to knock again, right? So it's like if, if there's a story in the Bible, uh, oh man, I wish I could remember. There's a story in the Bible where uh, I know I'm going to get this wrong, but God is talking to a particular person, right? And, and, and he comes to you know, the angel of the Lord, I guess, comes to this person in their sleep. And the, the angel says to him, I forget who it is, maybe Nathan or something. But he says, Nathan, wake up, come and follow me. And Nathan wakes up and he's like, I don't know what just happened. And he goes and like asks his dad. He's like, dad, did you just call me? And the dad's like sleeping. He's like, no, I didn't call you. What are you talking about? Go back to sleep. So Nathan goes back to sleep. And he hears it again. Nathan, do you hear me? Get up and follow me. And Nathan is like, what the? And then he gets up again and he, he wakes his dad up. He's like, dad, I heard you again. Why are you calling me? And his dad's like, no, that wasn't me. Nathan's now like scratching his head. He's like, what? Samuel. Thank you, Sam. It was Samuel. That's right, Samuel. Um, Samuel. So let me get it, get it right. Samuel. And... Uh, He's staying at the temple. That's right, Gabriel. Samuel saying this. I happy you guys know the Bible better than me. I know these stories. I just can't remember the details. So then finally, on the third time, the angel comes and says, Samuel, wake up and come to me. And then all of a sudden he realizes, okay, well, whoever this is, he's relentless. He must really want me is from the Lord, right? And I think that story is used often to let people know that if God is making a revelation to you in your life, God is offering you some grace in your life, God's really trying to talk to you in your life, he's not going to give up. It's not going to be like, whoop, oh, you didn't listen. That was, that was your chance. Sorry. He, don't, he doesn't work that way. He'll come over and over. And, and God is always wanting to offer his grace to us. God will knock on our door and try to offer his grace a thousand times. 
If we keep turning away at some point, he's that's it. You're you're but you'll get a lot of chances. You'll get plenty of chances. So don't ever feel like you missed the opportunity. You, I mean, if you die, then you missed it. But never feel like, oh, you know, I didn't take heed to that omen. Notice the omen. And here's something that you can do also. This is just a little prayer. It's a little prayer that I, I once heard from a friend of mine. And then I heard other people using it. I was like, wow, this is really good. It says, and it's very simple. It says, Lord, if this be of you, if this is from you, show me a sign. Lord, if this is from you, if this is not from you, take it away from me. That's what it is. Lord, if this is not from you, take it away from me. If it is of you, continue to show me the sign. You just ask that from God, right? That's right. So I don't put too much stock in these quote unquote omens anymore. I used to when I was a new ager. Um, I still see them. I notice them but I don't base my life on them. And if it's something that I'm waiting for, if there's some sign that I'm waiting for, some revelation I'm waiting for from the Lord, I'll be patient with it. And I'll ask him, show me again then, show me again. Or if it's not of you, take it away from me completely. So I hope that helps you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.